having a mobile base for my workbench is something that almost didn't happen. In this video, I'll tell you how I did it. Hi there and welcome to WB Fun Woodworking. I'm Don. In this video, I'm going to be in doing an instructional video on how I attached the casters to my workbench. Now, I didn't plan for the casters in advance, so I had to retrofit the base of my workbench so that the casters would fit. This video may be helpful to any of you that are in that situation, Yes, I know your workbench may not look anything like mine. You may have a trestle base or rubo or some other style that this particular modification won't work on. Towards the end of this video, I'm going to show you some examples of how you could modify other workbench styles using something similar to what I did on my workbench. But it could be helpful for those of you that are in the dreaming or planning stage for a workbench so that you can either plan to do this or plan to avoid the problem. So I hope this video will be helpful to some of you and your workbench. Rockler had a sale on their workbench caster set, so I decided to buy a set. As is typical today with a lot of items, it looks like everything was just thrown in the box. There really aren't a lot of parts. Of course, there's the casters that the bench rolls on and the brackets that hold them to the bench and allow them to go up and down. There's also a bag of hardware to attach it to the bench. The front of the box has a picture that shows the casters attached to a workbench. And the back shows all the parts. The directions for installing the casters are at one end of the box. These directions are all that they give, but they're pretty simple to follow. As I looked at the dimensions, I thought I might be in trouble with my workbench. When I looked at the bolt placement for the lower long rails on the workbench, I was pretty sure there was going to be an issue. When I got my tape measure out and looked at the distance involved, I knew there was something wrong. I placed the caster bracket onto the leg and then looked at the top and sure enough, I would have to put a screw right through that bolt. Now, as with many woodworking projects, there had to be a plan B. And that was to add a block of wood that the casters could sit on. I placed the caster bracket on the block of wood to see if it would work. It looked like this was going to be a good solution to my problem. The top screw for the bracket would go into the lower end rail of the workbench. It'll work out fine. I cut out the four blocks at the miter saw with some leftover pieces of the end rail material. The belt on my spindle sander was used to sand the blocks and round off the edges. The next step was to drill some holes to attach the block to the leg of the workbench. The quill travel on my drill press is very short, so I had to move the table up with the drill in the hole to get the full depth. I enlarged the holes to a set depth for the head of the screws. After sanding off as much paint as I could, I applied some glue to the workbench. If you're wondering about the brush I'm using, it's a silicone brush that's used for basting. I found it on Amazon. It's great for putting the glue on and the cleanup is very, very easy. Then I applied glue to the block of wood. There's a video on using silicone tools for glue ups that's on my YouTube channel. You might want to check that out if you haven't already. 
the block was clamped into place. I added two more clamps. With all the clamps in place, I inserted the screws and drove them in with my electric screwdriver. These electric screwdrivers are really handy to have in the shop. I have a video about them on my YouTube channel. To drive the screws in farther, I use my impact drill. With the blocks in place, I measured where I needed to drill the holes for the brackets. I used the bracket to mark out the top hole. Then with the bracket in place, I used an awl to make a hole where I needed to start the drill. I used those marks to drill pilot holes for the screws. Attaching the brackets to the blocks was very simple. It just takes two screws. I decided to attach an aluminum bar so that both of the brackets could be pushed down at the same time. Here I'm marking where the bar needs to be cut. I used my hacksaw to make all the cuts. Cutting the aluminum with the hacksaw was very easy. But it did take quite a while to make all the cuts. Attaching that vise to my workmate was probably not the greatest idea. It sure wasn't very steady. After making all of the cuts, I cleaned everything up with a file. The file I'm using here is one my dad had. I remember as a little kid using it in the workshop that he had at home. With those cuts made, I noticed that the casters still didn't spin freely when I put the workbench on the casters, so I decided to cut off a corner on each side. I used my DFM small carpenter square to mark where I needed to make the cut. Making those cuts with a hacksaw would have been almost impossible, so I pulled out my Dremel and used it. Yes, I was wearing my face shield when I cut the... I checked to see if the bar would fit. To attach the aluminum bar to the casters, I had to drill holes in the casters. I marked the space for the holes with one of my spring-loaded punches. And then I drilled the holes with my drill press. The next step was marking where I needed to drill the holes in the aluminum bar. Again, I used my spring-loaded punch. I used my drill press to drill the holes. Seeing all those metal curly cues coming off the drill bit reminded me of all the ones I had to clean up in my dad's shop when I was a kid. I decided I needed to add some extra strength to the aluminum bar and a little decorative touch, so I cut up some walnut pieces to fit on top of them. Then I shaped the walnut with my low angle block plane. This by far was the most pleasurable part of this project. I liked seeing those shavings fall off the plane. I seem to be one that may be changing over from some of my power tools to hand tools. They're a lot of fun to use. Obviously, I spent more time on this part of the project than I probably should have, but I sort of get mesmerized using that block plane. It's just a lot of fun, and I'm looking forward to doing that more in the future. With the pieces shaped, I marked where I needed to drill the holes for the screws. And again, use my drill press to drill the holes. And then I flipped the wood over and used a countersink 
to prepare the hole for the screw heads that I was planning to use. I went pretty deep with my countersink. Walnut looks much better with some kind of finish on it. I had this Watco Danish oil sitting around for many years and it was still fine for this part of the project. I decided to apply two coats. Just in case you're wondering, yes these walnut pieces were scrap that I had just sitting around. Once the aluminum bars and the walnut pieces were ready, I attached them to the caster brackets with stainless steel screws and locking nuts. This way I thought they would stay on and I wouldn't have to tighten them very often. With the caster brackets and the bars in place, the last step was to attach the casters to the brackets. This step went very easily. Now it was time to test them out. One set down. And the second set goes down. They worked perfectly. I'm really happy that I did this. Well, I hope you found that video helpful. Whether you've started your workbench or you're in the, still in the dream phase of your workbench. So here's some ideas that I came up with for some other styles of workbench. Maybe one of these will be exactly what you're looking for. These are examples of benches that might need the same modification I used or something similar because bolts would be in the way of the caster brackets. On this Rubo, there isn't enough space under the stretcher for the casters, and attaching screws might interfere with the sliding mechanism, so a block needs to be added. On these trestle workbench bases, the foot sticks out beyond the leg, so a block would have to be added. In this example, a block could be added underneath the stretcher to bring the leg face out flush with the edge of the foot. It might be a challenge to add casters to a workbench like this with a shoulder vise. I'd approach it differently because the stretchers stick out way beyond the legs. On the extra leg for the vise outrigger, the same method for the trestle table could be used. On the other three legs, I'd use the same method that I did, but I'd make sure that the block was wide enough so that it was even with the edge of the foot. The same method could be used for the outwicker just for looks. At first look, the slanted legs of this Nicholson look like they would be rather difficult to do, but just adding a triangle block of wood to each of the legs would give a perpendicular surface for the casters to sit on. It should be something that you can think about as far as your workbench is concerned. If you like this video, please remember to give it a thumbs up down below, ask any questions, make any comments. Those really help our channel. I greatly appreciate those of you that have subscribed to the channel. If you haven't thought of doing that, please do that today and ring that notification bell. That'll be helpful for you as far as seeing future videos from me. Thank you all very much for watching.